Japan is an island country. The sea that surrounds it on all sides is at times a barrier, at times it is a bridge. For many centuries, it was primarily a bridge, especially from China and Korea, bringing culture that the Japanese adopted as their own. During the Edo period, from 1600 to 1868, it had both dimensions. Often in the West, we say that Japan was a closed country, or sakoku, as it's called in Japanese. But for the Asians, Japan was not closed. Thousands, literally, of ships from China, Korea, the Ryukyu Kingdom, and even Southeast Asia brought goods to the Japanese. The Europeans, however, were limited to contact with the Dutch in Nagasaki. It was when the Americans arrived in 1853 that they gave the Japanese no choice. They said, it is time to open your country to our trade. The Japanese knew that if they were to resist, they would lose in a war. So they signed unequal treaties that were not abrogated for over 30 years. Yet Japan was also at this time closed to itself in that few Japanese during the Edo period traveled abroad. But during the Meiji period, this period of new modernity, hundreds and then thousands of Japanese traveled abroad to study, to learn new techniques, and to bring new cultures into their own land. What we see in Otake Chikuha is an example of this mixing of cultures of the modern from the Europe and the United States and of the traditional Japanese. This was an event that would have happened with some degree of frequency during Japan's Warring States era between around 1467 and 1600. There were many castles that warlords made their home domain um, headquarters. And when they went to war, the castle became the main object of attack by the enemy. Here we see an image in which the castle has just begun to meet its end. The smoke is filling the room. You can see it on the top. You can see it as it travels across. And we have the warlord's wife, mother of these two children and her two um, ladies in waiting along with her. Rather than allow themselves to be killed by the enemy or die in the flames, it was the custom for the wife to draw out her dagger, end the lives of her children, and then end 
her own life. As I grew up, I was aware my grandfather was a painter. But he was a scandalous one. So my impression of him was not good. It was not until 2018 I saw this painting, Hall of the Castle, at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. I was actually quite impressed by the grave sorrowness, sadness, at such a young age he painted, 24. But being 24 in Meiji era means different from nowadays. I asked the curator, could I have a little private time with this painting? Paris, the curator, said yes. So I danced with his painting before the museum opened. This was my first duet with someone who did not exist. He died so long ago. So tonight, I am here to offer you some of his words and some knowledge I found. My objective is to use my body as a conduit to so long ago. My voice might give you some idea of who he was. Please imagine and let him linger. Otake Chikuha was born in 1878, the 11th year of the Meiji era. His life can be divided roughly into three periods. Early in his life, he proved himself to be a talented painter. By 1907, he was exhibiting in the national exhibition called the Bunten, where he won numerous prizes. Yet in 1908, he had a quarrel with Okakura Kakuzo, who many of you know from his Book of Tea, after which he left Okakura's group. Upset with the politics of the art world, Chikuha then ran for the lower house of the parliament, but he lost putting him into enormous debt. After that, he entered a later period during which he created many paintings, often called avant-garde, and exhibited widely. He died in 1936, the 11th year of the Shoah era. It seems fairly clear from his work that picking up on the tradition of artists such as Hokusai, that he was a very close observer of nature. So I saw this picture, three brothers naked, and I was very surprised. So I showed this photo to Koma, my partner, and he ran to my mom and said, see, see, this is not my fault that we are dancing naked. <laughs> it's in Eiko's jeans. Otake's three brothers needed each other to be naked. It takes a little bit of bond. So I had coma. Coma and I danced naked, naked from 1983 to all the way to 2000. 14. This is my self. In 1986, here on this stage, was the first naked body in this building. <laughs> when Chikuho was 18, he moved to go for good to Tokyo and started creating these kinds of images for the popular market, mixing traditional themes with Western themes, like a cherub with wings in the top right. He was also hired by textbook companies to create paintings. In this one, we see an image 
taken of a um, Amaterasu, the um, sun goddess, um, based on a tale in the Kojiki, um, the, which was produced in the year 712. You know, Bill? Yes. This actually makes me feel a little disturbed. Yes. I knew his family was very, very poor, and he really had to grow to make money. So I understand how he was excited to get that job, right? From uh, official Japanese government decided um, textbook. But it's very clear that textbook was trying to teach Japanese children to take Japan as more than what it was and take it as a god country. So many children throughout Japan were looking at textbook and making the exciting story, feeling it, and not being critical about it. Yet at the same time, he was creating images such as this one, which we see of a child, Kakube Jishi, a child who is a traveling street performer. Kids had to work. They couldn't go to school. The expressions that he's drawing feels very much remembering his own youth where he had to survive himself. Here we have a painting from 1910, which was exhibited in the national exhibition, the Boon Ten. Um, it's of a ridge pole, which would have been the top of, of the, uh, the ridge for a temple or shrine. What's fascinating is that along with the aristocrats we see in this image, we see very uh, carefully rendered images of the workers which is something that we don't really see in many paintings from this time or even much earlier. So many of his paintings are not existing because he lived in Tokyo. Many of his collectors are from Tokyo. And Tokyo had Taisho period uh, earthquake. So 1923, September 3rd, around 1215, a huge earthquake uh, uh, knocked over the cooking pots of many, many households making an inferno in which over 100,000 people died. So that probably had destroyed not only Chikuhas, but many painters' works. And those that survived could have also been burned out in ni by 1945, the Tokyo Air Raids. Here, we're also from 1910. We have another uh, piece that won the highest prize at the official art exhibition, the Bunten. He was made a lot of painting that was sold very well. But putting an exhibition means not only buyers, but the people can see it. He was actually quite shameless in ways that he would put 10, 20, 30, 50 pieces to one exhibition, one after the other. Here we see a painting from 1913, which was a bit of a turning point in his life. He put a great deal of work into this image, which is of a procession of people on their way. 